Hello students, I am Sunil Ranjan and I am an English teacher. In this session now, I have come up with the theatre of the absurd and when you listen to the video, you will get to understand the topic in a very easy manner. So, here I begin. Theatre of the absurd. The theatre of the absurd or absurdism is a term coined by theatre critic Martin Esslin in 1961 in his text The Theatre of the Absurd to describe a set of particular plays written in the mid 20th century as well as later plays that were written in the same tradition. Esslin pointed to these plays as examples of a philosophy by Albert Camus which says that life has no inherent meaning. Plays associated with this theory generally share several characteristics such as nonsense dialogue, repetitive or meaningless action, and non-realistic or impossible plots. Common elements included illogical plots including characters who appeared out of harmony with their own existence. In his essay in 1961, Esslin classified four playwrights as leaders of the movement. Samuel Beckett, Eugene Ionesco, Arthur Adamov, and Jean Janet. The theatre of the absurd movement began as experimental theatre in Paris. Even after it spread to other countries, absurdist plays were often written in French. The first large major production of an absurdist play was Jean Janet's The Maids in 1947. Ionesco's The Ball Soprano was first performed in 1950 and Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, best known of all such plays, was performed in 1953. Theatre of the Absurd was not a conscious movement. The exponents of the form were a disconnected group of playwrights. It is often called a reaction to the realism movement in the theatre. Rather than try to conform as closely as possible to a concept of real life, absurdists sought to provide an unmistakably unreal experience. In an absurdist play, Time and settings are generally ambiguous, if they are even defined at all. Characters are not meant to mimic real people, but instead are often metaphorical or archetypal. The guiding principle of this movement is to look at the world without any assumption of purpose. Esselin suggests that without a fixed belief system or guiding principle, all actions become useless and absurd. Therefore, anything that happens is permissible. Absurd originally means out of harmony. In the context of theatre, absurd means without purpose, illogical, useless, devoid of reason, meaningless, hopeless, chaotic, lacking order, uncertain, and having the notion of existentialism of French philosophers and playwrights Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus that refers to the belief that man starts life with nothing. His life is made up of acts. Through the process of acting, man becomes conscious of his original nothingness. By choosing to act, man passes into the arena of human responsibility, which makes him the creator of his own existence. The existence inevitably ends with death. Man returns to his original state of nothingness. This existential notion eliminates the Western concept of man's exalted nature. Life becomes meaningless and useless, a condition which is in essence absurd. Man's only freedom in, in this condition is the exercise of his conscious mind. 
However, consciousness means conflict between man's awareness of the absurdity of his existence and his need for justification of his human action. The atrocities of World War II are considered influential to the movement, highlighting the instability of human existence. Sartre denied the existence of a god, seeing humans with no choice but to create their own standards and moral code in life, instead of accepting standards offered by the church, the state or society. Kamut's long essay, The Myth of Sisyphus, sees Sisyphus endlessly pushing a boulder to the top of a mountain, only to see it roll to the bottom again. This futile labor is a similarity for man's meaningless existence a quality seen in many characters and plots of absurdist plays. As for the plot and structure, theatre of the absurd is anti-realistic and goes against many of the accepted norms of conventional theatre. It has been labelled by some critics as anti-theatre. It is often characterised by a deliberate absence of the cause and effect relationship between scenes. It has non-linear plot developments, sometimes cyclical, ending where they began. It appears occasionally as if it has no plot at all. There is deliberate lack of conflict. It turned out to be a play in which nothing happened, yet it kept audiences glued to their seats. It is a play in which normally nothing happens twice. As far as the dialogues go, the language is unreliable and distrusted and often illogical. Often there are long pauses with cliches, repetitive and rhythmical. There is frequent use of silence and dialogues are often slow and monotonous. Sometimes they are accompanied by a frenzied, fast-paced monologue. The stage is often simple and has little use of stagecraft. Often there are barren set pieces, barely denoting a location, such as a tree and a country road, as in Waiting for Godot. Plays that belong to the theatre of abs the absurd are Waiting for Godot and Endgame by Samuel Beckett, Rhinoceros, The Chairs, and The Lesson by Eugene Ionesco, and The Balcony by Jean Janet. So here I come to the end of the lesson. So I hope students, you understood what I said just now on the theater of the absurd. If you have subscribed to my channel, it's nice. If you haven't, I suggest you to subscribe to my channel so that you get a lot more in the time to come. Thank you.